Hello and welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, we are going to look at how to get multiple find replacements happening in one go using Power Query. We could use simple Excel functions like replace or substitute if you have a single word that you would like to substitute with something else. You could also nest them one inside another if you want to replace two words or three words with corresponding words. But what if you have a piece of text or a range with different text values and in each of those text values, you want to replace all the values that are in the find column of a table and replace them with the replace column of the corresponding table. So that means wherever four is there, we want to replace with six. Wherever normal is there, we want to replace with casual, so on and so forth. <laughs> now, such replacements are tricky to achieve with the built-in Excel functions alone. We would have to either use VBA or a very long substitute formula that has multiple listings to handle possibly n number of rows in the table. So in this video, we will look at a different technique through Power Query and we will also understand a powerful and extremely uh, versatile function called list.accumulate. Okay, let's get into the Excel file here. You can download a copy of this file from the video description below. So I have a couple of paragraphs here, one in each cell. If you are wondering, these are the paragraphs from the very first Harry Potter novel, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, and we have some paragraphs here. We would like to replace all the occurrences of these words with those words. Okay. If I just want to replace, for example, four with six, we could, as I said earlier, use substitute, right? So we can say substitute in this text uh, four with six and it would do the job. But if I want to do a replacement of four with six, normal with casual, mysterious with confounding, so on and so forth, we can't really use substitute alone. We must nest the substitutes one inside another. But because that's not scalable, we will learn the Power Query method. So we would need to be loading both the text data table as well as the find replacements table into Power Query. And then from there, we will have to uh, apply the process to find all of these items and replace them with them and then return a an updated version of this table as an output. I have already built that query here, but I'm going to show you from scratch how to do all of these steps. So let's uh, take either of these tables. You can select one of the data items and then go to uh, data and then uh, from get and transform data area from table range option. This will load up the my text data into oh, table name is my text already and then it will load up that into power query as i said i have already built that that's why this table is called my text 2 i'm just going to rename this as my text demo and uh, we have the table here we would like to do the same for replacements find replace i have already loaded it here uh, so this is the find and replace table from our excel file loaded here so we now have two tables and to understand this particular technique, we need to learn three different concepts. So that's what uh, those concepts are. Uh, what is a list dot accumulate? Uh, and then how to get lists from table columns. So we have a table with find column and replace column, and we would like to first get them as two separate lists. So that's the getting lists part and accessing individual list items. So these are three different concepts, but we will combine all three to arrive at the solution. Let's uh, go through them one at a time. List.accumulate. What list.accumulate does is it will do an operation on a list. A list is a bunch of items, essentially a single column table. We can think of that as a list, uh, but Power Query uses a separate data type for lists called a list. And uh, uh, what list.accumulate does is it will take an operation and do it on all the items on the table and then return one final value. So you can think of it as a packing service that takes a list, list and then somehow shrinks that into a single value. So that's what list.accumulate does. Um, let's uh, demonstrate this uh, list.accumulate through a very, very simple uh, method. I'm going to just insert a blank query. You can right click here, new query. 
other sources blank query and in this query i'm just going to print numbers up to 10 okay so we'll get a list like this uh, this is a shortcut for list dot numbers uh, formula and it will generate a list of numbers 1 to 10 now what i want to do is i want to calculate the total of all these 10 numbers right the, there are different ways to total up these numbers for example you could use one of the existing functions like list dot sum to sum up the values in the list another method is you can total one at a time so you can take zero as the starting point and then add one to it that the result will be one and then take this one and then add two to it you'll get two okay i'm just going to do a bit of screen drawing here so that this approach becomes easy so we start with the value called zero and then we add zero with one we will get the output as one we will add one with two we'll get output as three and then we'll add three with three we'll get output as six we'll add six with four we'll get output as 10. we'll continue doing that and then we will end up with a final value of 55 which is the sum of the first 10 numbers in the list right so if you think of this process this is how the list dot accumulate works it starts with a basic input value the seed value or state value as it is called uh, and the seed value in this case is zero so we start with zero and for each item in the list we do an operation okay the operation would be adding the current item in the list to the state and then updating the state so you can think of this as we start with zero take the current item add to it and then keep that as state and then add the next item keep that as state so we continue updating the state value and at the end of the process whatever is the state value that is the output of the list dot accumulate so that's how list dot accumulate works i'll show you quickly how we can turn these 10 numbers into 55 through list dot accumulate let me get rid of these drawings and uh, we will add a new step uh, through the fx button here and uh, it will say this step is equal to source now source is the previous step and it is already a list so we can simply say list dot accumulate source so that means take the source list and start with zero and we will use a function the function must have two parameters so this is basically the uh, process for creating list.accumulate so what list.accumulate does is it has three parameters source is the list on which it must act uh, so this is the list that is used to generate the accumulation c zero or whatever value you put here is the starting value and then it needs to have a function with two parameters uh, state and current okay so state would be whatever is the initial state so when you start it will be zero but as you kind of iterate through each item in the list that state will change and current points to the current item in the list so when you start it will be one and then it'll go up to ten in this function the when you create a function it, this is how power query functions are like you have parameters and then function will be defined by using equal to greater than symbol and uh, this would be just uh, state plus current so all this function does is take the current value add it to state and return that that's all that does uh, and then we will just close that and we get 55 okay so this is what list dot accumulate does in a nutshell you may not be really overwhelmed by this you might think nah i could use list dot sum source and i'll get the result and of course you would be right but uh, what we are really doing here is learning a method through which i can do a single operation on each item in the list but as i do the operation the value changes now we can use this idea to do our replacements all, all we have to do is we first replace four with six then we replace normal with casual in that replaced text so that means at each point the original text keeps changing so we could think of the original text as the seed value or the state value and the current values are these well, they're not technically these alone they're combination of these two and as we go through this list at each time the text value changes and when you end up with the fifth step you will get the final replaced text so this is how that kind of a nested replacement can happen all right so that's the first concept we understand how list dot accumulate we need to learn two more concepts which is getting lists from table columns and accessing individual items these two concepts are fairly simple to understand we just have to demonstrate them i'm going to show you uh, through another blank query how to access a table column as a list 
Uh, for now, we will just leave it here. We will go back to the replacements. So replacements is a table that has two columns. Each column of the table can be thought, think, you can think of that as a list. So this column has these five items, this column has these five items. So we could think of this entire column as a single list. So I can access that column as a list here by giving table name, column name, rotation. So replacements find, I'll get a list. As you could clearly see Power BI saying, this is a list, these are the five items. So this is how you can access a table column as a list for your processes. How do you access an individual item in the list? You can use curly brackets and then say three, you will get, what do you think we are gonna get? Is it mysterious? We'll get nonsense. <laughs> this is not a nonsense. The reality is Power Query uses a zero based system. This is different from Excel in, in usual sense. So Excel uses one as a basis for most of the array operations, like when you use index or whatever, but Power Query uses zero. So this is why we get three. If I put it, uh, if I delete this, you can see that this is, so if you get, you want to get a third item, we must actually say two, and then we will get uh, the mysterious item. So this is how you can access uh, lists from table columns and individual items from list items. Individual items we use curly brackets and list is just table name square bracket uh, column name notation. So now that we are equipped with these three key concepts, let's go and mix everything together and generate our uh, multiple find replace process. So we go to my text demo. What we want to do is for each text here, we want to add a new column that takes this text value and then it will uh, it will take a list of all the find values so that means these values and for each value that it is found it will replace with a corresponding value okay it's not so simple what we will also need to use is we want to use a, an intermediate list because uh, uh, if you observe the way list.accumulate is working it, it it takes a source which is the list and it will provide the current item in the source. Okay, so because source list is one to 10, current item will be one, two, three, four, five. So there is no way we can access any other lists through this method. So we must be using what is in the source alone, right? But because if I write this in such a way that, for example, list.accumulate replacements find here, then I can only access the items to find. I can't really access the items to replace. So this is why we have to use a different technique. Uh, I'll show you that uh, here. We will go to table and column, custom column. In this custom column, we will write uh, this column as text after replacements. That's a new column name. And then we will say uh, list dot accumulate, okay? I find uh, that the, within Power Query, when you use autocomplete, there is actually a bug. Sometimes it replaces the words, like you see this is saying list list. Uh, it must be some sort of a an error they, they didn't really test through. So what we want to do is we want to accumulate by taking a list and then for each item in the list, we want to do a replacement on the original text value. So we can generate an initial list. The initial list needs to have same size as how many our rows are there in the replacement table. Okay, you will understand why we are doing it like this in a, in a minute, but uh, what we will do is we will just say list dot numbers. Okay. List dot numbers is used to generate a list of numbers. Starting number would be zero and count would be uh, table dot I'm just thinking, what is the table dot row count? Okay, let's uh, oh, table dot row count here, right? Replacements. So that means generate a list that is equal to table dot row count replacement. How many of our rows are there in the table? I want that many list of numbers, but because we are starting from zero, we must say minus one uh, to subtract uh, for that because we are starting from zero, obviously. So this will be giving you a list of items to begin with, okay? So we have list of items, and for each item in the list, we want to uh, we want to start with the seed value 
of text so this is my starting value we just take the text in the column here uh, and then for that text uh, we will create a function state current okay so in this function what this will do is it will do text dot replace this auto suggest is really right text dot replace this is just going to replace uh, and uh, text will be state okay so this is uh, just taking the previous value of the text and then uh, so initially it will be with the original text and then as, as you loop through the list it will change so we'll take the previous state and then old text would be uh, the replacements table find value so replacements find will give you that find column in the replacements table within curly brackets current okay so this will give you the current the it will give you initially the first value to replace so find second values to find third value to find like that and then replacements replace current okay so let's observe what is happening here we are starting by making a list of numbers so this is going to be from 0 to initially 4 because we have 5 values to replace and it starts with the text in this column and we we want it to run this function which will take the text in this column as an initial point and replace the first value with first value to find and then this will change the state and it will continue like that and it will do its thing we will get this so now you can see uh, it has done uh, its job and we we get the uh, results right uh, now let's just uh, double check whether it has done the job uh, properly or not nursely should be sprinkly i think uh, it has done verse six but uh, okay i think it was doing everything it is supposed to do except replacing the words nursely with sprinkly and uh, i was really confused like why it is not doing uh it is a very simple error we should not have done minus one here this is mainly because i the what list dot numbers does is it starts from zero it generates this many items so we should have just left it as it is i somehow got confused thinking it starts from zero and ends at that but no it starts from zero and it will make this many numbers so this would be that and we will get sprinkly as well so that is that now let's go and so this is uh, how you can use a list dot accumulate i hope uh, you are finding this particular video very useful uh, i find that list dot accumulate is extremely versatile you can use this to process lists to do some really crazy things and uh, initially when i learned this i learned this few years ago and i've been using this off and on on different situations but there is a web page that i always go back because this is a function that i normally don't use every day but there will be situations from time to time where there is no other option but to use a list dot replace accumulate and uh, the only way to use that is by kind of refreshing the knowledge so i go to this excellent article uh, written by gil raviv uh, it a data chant and uh, you can you can read this particular one i will leave a link to that uh, it is a bit old but it is still very relevant because there hasn't been any new changes to the way list.accumulate works and it explains uh, what list.accumulate is and uh, how to use it with some simple examples but once you kind of refresh that you can always use it for more complicated things like multiple find replace as i showed you here so that's all for now. So thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in another video. Bye-bye.